Hello, I'm Joanne Jenkins, Chief Executive Officer of AARP, America's largest membership organization with 38 million Americans 50 and over. And we're proud to serve nearly 6 million AARP members who are current or former military service members. We've created free resources, tools, and community programs to help veterans and military families meet their daily challenges head on, whether on the job or at home. For example, the AARP Fraud Watch Network, in partnership with Operation Protect Veterans, has a new online Veterans Fraud Center detailing the latest scams targeting veterans and military families and tips on how to stay safe. AARP's Veterans and Military Spouse Job Center provides a one-stop job hub where you can get free tools, resources, and skills builder courses, and our job board directly connects veterans and military spouses to service-friendly employers wanting to hire them. When you're a military veteran caregiver, you start young, care longer, and face many unique challenges. That's why AARP provides a military caregiving guide and a veteran's health benefits navigator. Through our 53 state offices and nationwide network, AARP can help you find a new mission through volunteer service that provides the right opportunity to give back to your community and fellow veterans. At AARP, we're on a mission to support veterans and military families. Thank you. Hey everyone, I am so excited seeing where everyone is dropping into the chat, where they're watching from. Thank you so much. That is really exciting. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I am very excited to have you all here. I want to say thank you to Joanne Jenkins, the CEO of AARP for that opening message. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Maria Reed. I am going to be your host and facilitator today for the revamp and revive webinar. That's a mouthful, but I can say it. And I'm so glad again that you're here to be a part of this discussion. We're going to do this together. We definitely want you to be involved. Um, so I, if you don't mind, just like to take a little moment and introduce myself. Again, my name is Maria Reed. I've been an advocate for military families for over a decade, supporting military families and service members with all of their needs and what we call about what helps them support their life. And I am also a military spouse of 20 years. Uh, my husband is on the road to retirement, but now I'm also a military mom. Our son is 19 years old and he is currently in basic training. So I'm in all my feelings, y'all, all my feelings. So any military moms out there, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Show me some love, drop me a heart, because I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get through all of this. Um, I'd like to share with you that I am the creator and host of the TV series, Moving with the Military. We honor military families with surprise home makeovers. I think home renovation and home makeovers are in my DNA. We've done over 80, and I'm very passionate about helping us turn our houses into homes. I think it's so important. And with all of that being said, um, this is an incredibly exciting webinar today to discuss AARP's newest resource, the Veteran Home Modification Benefits Guide. And when I first learned about it, I had to share it with all of my contacts because I knew that it was something really spectacular that could help benefit so, so many veterans and military families. Okay, I am gonna get over here because I got a lot of screens open, if you see my eyes moving around, um, because I wanna get through some of the things that we're gonna be talking about today and how this webinar is going to work. So first of all, this event is for you, for our veterans and their families. And we want you to be part of the discussion, not just watching, watching the discussion, but be a part of it. So we want you to ask questions and we want you to submit them through the live chat that should be at the bottom of your screen. And we want you to submit your questions for the panelists. If we don't get to those questions during that panel time, I believe that there's gonna be some members of Blue Star Families and AARP at the ready to answer those questions in the chat. But like I said, this is a conversation. We want you to be a part of it. It's not just hearing, hearing us talk. So going over the agenda for today, we're gonna to do an overview of the guide with Juanita Jimenez Soto. She is AARP's National Veterans and Military Families Manager. We're also gonna be speaking with AARP's Amy Goyer. She is a caregiving expert and she will speak with 
um, make sure I'm reading all this right. Don't want to get anything wrong. She's going to be speaking with the Seviers. They are AARP health consultants and military benefits expert. And then we're going to have a round table with um, veterans with, uh, excuse me, we're going to have a round table with the experts from the Department of Veterans Affairs and AARP. And unfortunately, due to the impending hurricane, our Home Depot representative is no longer able to join us. And we will be sharing those Home Depot resources in the live chat closer to the end of our event today. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to answer any questions that you may have as well. Um, and then we're going to close it out with resources and links to help you leverage this great resource and your hard-earned benefits. All right, that was a lot to say to get through. Uh, and I am really excited right now because I want to introduce Juanita. Juanita, are you on the screen with me? I'm here. I'm ready to go and ready to share everything that we have to offer for our veterans, military families. My husband is a Navy veteran, so I am there with you. My son is a lieutenant in the Army, and I have a nephew in the Coast Guard. I get so emotional because <laughs> it takes a certain kind of person mm -hmm. to actually give their lives up for a certain amount of time for you, for me, for everyone that is here. So very grateful to be here with you. Thank you so much. I was saying earlier, I was so glad to get that phone call from my son today. I typ typically don't get that opportunity, but because of the hurricane, they allowed um, him to call and just let his family know that he was okay. So that meant the world to me. I promise I won't cry, guys. I promise. I'm going to keep it together. I won't either. I won't either. <laughs> okay. So Juanita, I really want to ask you today, like, you know, why are we here? Why does this matter? How can it help? Give, give me all the things. Tell me all the details. Well, you know, AARP is a nonprofit organization, and we have nearly 38 million members nationwide, and we are especially proud to serve the nearly 6 million U.S. veterans, active duty service members, and military families. And when you're a veteran with more than 40,000, 40,000 organizations trying to assist you, empower you, it can be very difficult to find the right info, right? That's why AARP decided to bring together valuable, tangible resources to meet the unique needs of veterans and their loved ones. And we're talking about community programming, uh, timely information, and access to discounts. And our Veterans and Military Families Initiatives, which I am very proud of, we offer tools tailored to the military community for family caregiving, accessing earned military service benefits, earned, earned military service benefits, fighting fraud with our Operation Protect Veterans program, which you heard our mm -hmm. amazing CEO mention in that video, and finding meaningful employment through AARP's Veterans Military Spouses Job Center. Now, all this content and more is free. You do not have to be a member of your, thank you very much. There are a lot of benefits to being a member, but it is free and you can find it on our website, aarp.org slash veterans. Again, aarp.org slash veterans. And we like to say that we are on a mission to support veterans and military families. And that mission includes making free resources, like I said, available like the Home Modification Benefits Guide, which we are going to be talking about today. And it connects veterans, military families with financial assistance programs so that they can modify their homes. I mean, this is information that a lot of vets and family members don't know about. Okay, so I'm really glad that you brought that up because we hear that all the time. We get thousands and thousands of emails from veterans, um, you know, wanting to figure out how to do home modification. So that that's the problem. They don't know where to start with their home modifications. They don't know like what's the process. Can you walk us a little bit through that? I know we're going to get into it in um, greater detail, but can you help us out a little bit with that? Sure. I mean, the guide will give you a step by step. And here's the thing. And I want everyone to really pay attention to this is that not every case is the same. Every case is different. And I know we don't want to hear that sometimes. A lot of times I don't want to hear that. But it all depends on us getting our ducks in a row, which I know we're going to be talking about 
how to lay those ducks out so that we can get that help as soon as possible and without any kind of issue. You know, I mean, we looked at a lot of things and the reason this guide is so important is because after a study that we conducted, it revealed that more than half of veterans ages 45 and older are unaware that the VA offers grant funding to modify their homes. You know, I mean, more than half. And then nearly a quarter of veterans are in need of financial assistance to make home modifications to continue living in their homes, you know, because they want to live safely and independently. And a, a lot of times they paid off their homes. So a lot of what we are offering, a lot of what we are doing is because there is a need there. And mm -hmm. we are connectors and we are connecting our veterans again with these benefits they have earned. Okay. So you talked on so many points and I'm like, because I didn't know about that home modification guide either. And when I found out about it, I literally jumped out of my seat and was like, wait a minute, there, there is this. I sent it off to many contacts. I already have several uh, veteran friends that are applying because they're seeing that this, they didn't know that this exists. And I say that often, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. And that's right. So that's why we're here. Um, and I think you touched on this a little bit, but I'm going to ask it again to wrap up this section, which is why is AARP involved today? Why? Well, because we see a need and our job is to empower the veterans, because I like to say you don't help a veteran. They are some tough cookies. You empower them. You empower their families because they're tough cookies, too. I mean, mm -hmm. being a, a, a military family is a little bit um, it's tough. Yeah. And that's why we did it to empower veterans and their families because they we know the sacrifice they made and we are ever so grateful for it. Oh, I'm so glad. And again, if someone on the back end could drop in the chat where they can get, because you mentioned the free resources, where they can go directly to get. Thank you. I see they're dropping it in. Thank you so much, the back end folks. All right. Thank you so much, Juanita. I know we're going to bring you back toward the end. Um, but we're going to start a conversation right now. All right. We're going to bring up Amy Goyer, AARP caregiving expert. She's a trusted voice in the caregiving community. Her personal experience of caregiving for her father and sharing resources and advocating for caregivers. Thank you, Amy. Are you on with me? You are. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we're also going to bring in David and Catherine Sevier. I practice. I want David and Catherine to know I practice saying that so that I would not mess up your last name. Um, <laughs> Catherine and David are active members of the AARP community in North Carolina. Catherine is the former state president, and David, congratulations, you're the newly elected state president. Happy collapse for that. David right. is also a Navy veteran, and Catherine is pa a passionate caregiver and patient advocate. I'm so excited to have both of you on today. And Amy, if it's all right with you, I'm going to throw it over to you so you guys can start the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Maria, for uh, uh, leading us through this. David and Catherine, two of my favorite people. Uh, we've talked a lot about this Home Modification Benefits Guide, and I want to start out by kind of digging into the specifics. What is, what is in this guide? Uh, I mean, you did a lot of work on this guide, and I serve as AARP's family caregiving expert, so I'm, I'm sending a lot of people to this guide as well in terms of caregivers. But what is in the guide? How is this guide going to help people? Thank you, Amy. Let, let me start off by just saying uh, thank you to all our uh, veterans and the people that are um, in the in the audience today. I am a retired Navy person. Uh, I I had the unique opportunity while I was on active duty to uh, put together a lot of information about uh, how we get health care. And so I have been working for about five years in the uh, in the whole uh, area of um, information for uh, veterans on uh, everything from uh, health benefits to now this uh, home modification benefits guide. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, one of our AARP people said, "Do you think you could put together?" 
a document that would incorporate what we have uh, produced previously in the AARP world called the Home Fit Guide. And that's how to modify your home to make it accessible while you're aging or as you're aging. And, um, and we said, well, we probably could do something like that. But then we got into uh, the information from the Department of Veterans Affairs and reached uh, a gentleman that you'll be uh, talking to soon called Jay Latonia. He is the chief of the Home Modification Benefits Program at VA. And he blew our mind. He said, you know what? There are 150 million million dollars worth of grants every year to disabled veterans and we would love to make that number a lot bigger so all of a sudden we turned from just creating what was called uh, a, a VA uh, or a veterans uh, centric home fit guide to the home modifications benefits guide and uh, and so we put that together. Uh, it it is a step by step process. It includes a lot of case studies, a lot of information. It's not too long. We we wanted it to be uh, very accessible, very uh, unique for people to be able to uh, get the information that's necessary. So it, it just takes you step by. Go ahead. Yeah. So. When we when you look at that, and I encourage you folks who are watching to go and, and look at the website link because uh, the digital version is available online, and you can go mm -hmm. through and it outlines um, the grant, some of the grants that are available, uh, the special adapted housing grant, the special housing adaption grant, the temporary residence adaption grant, and home improvements and structural alterations programs. Um, so. Why should people use this guide? How is it going to be? How is it going to help the lives of veterans and their family caregivers? I think that's the question. You know, uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of comments from people who are saying, uh, you know, I, I applied, we didn't qualify. You know, what are the what are the things in this in this guide that might change the picture a little bit for people? Well, I so um, one of the big challenges that I'm a former VA nurse and I can tell you from being in that role and dealing with eligibility just learning to navigate the VA sometimes is more daunting than any of us would like it to be I and so I'm sure I'm sure one of our goals is really to get you to the starting line with what you need, the, the paperwork you need, the eligibility you need. If you haven't gotten VA health benefits before, have a pie, we've got a guide for that. Um, so we want to get you to the starting line as painlessly as we can. The other thing that we want to urge those of you who maybe have tried in the past, the VA is, it has been changing dramatically in the last several years with the PACT Act and other activities like that, so that being turned down somewhere in your past may not be the same as, as what is available to you now. So I want to urge people to, um, to really try uh, to re-engage. And let me say as a clinician, your primary care physician and the team that takes care for, of you every day can be your best friend and advocate in this. But you need to go to them and say, my condition is changing. My needs are greater. Here are my problems. And give them that information so that they can side, be your best advocate as you're moving forward, both with home modifications as well as getting other kinds of care that you need. That's a, that's a great point. If I could just very quickly add to that, we have in the guide uh, a couple of examples of people who qualified for home modifications. And a, the the big grant, the, the largest grant, the, uh, the SAH grant, uh, can be uh, obtained up to $117,000 for modifying your home. And so we've got a couple of examples of people that did that. One uh, gentleman was uh, injured. Uh, he lost a, a, a couple of legs in Vietnam, 
Uh, he went on, he got prosthetics, uh, and, and he, he, as he said it, uh, had a fairly normal life. He was a uh, judge advocate general. He was a JAG uh, in the military, and then he became a judge for the VA. And he said, I don't need any modifications in my home. But then as he began to age, he realized, okay, well, maybe I could use some things. I'm, I'm having to be in my wheelchair more often. And so uh, he found out he called for the band he got it and uh and so we uh we have history in there and it's something that changes over time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes and i heard you there are two videos on the landing page for the guide um the the gentleman that you're referring to and also a more recent iraq war veteran um and th their experiences with the deaf adaptations so that they were able to make using grants. So I encourage you to, to look at those, but keep in mind that there is a wide range of things that these grants might cover, right? You might do a major remodel, you might even build a house, but you might also just get ramps or handrails or appliances. Uh, you know, didn't you tell me a story about someone um, who, who had some, some more minor changes done to their home? Yeah, but so there are a number of those, and there's a whole group of people that work within in VA called the Assistive Technologies Group, and they do things like, let's imagine that your hearing has failed some, and you can't, you can't hear well, and you need to, to call or be called by someone else in your fa family. They can put in intercoms for you. They can help you open doors remotely if you're not able to reach the door handles. There are help calling for help devices. So again, it's really understanding your problems and what you need assistance with. So there are those little things. There are uh, bathroom modifications. There are uh, the things that we normally think about, but also some very simple things that that make life better for people as they're wanting to live at home. And we all want to age in place. And no matter how old we are, we want to age in place with our with the people we care about surrounding us. Right. And the guide goes through some of the eligibility and enrollment um, qualifications. It goes through. Uh, uh, also, you know, the information that you're going to need, how to enroll in, v in VA benefits if you're not already enrolled. I know, you know, just my uh, dad was a ve veteran of World War II uh, and Korean War, and I had to enroll him in VA benefits. He had not maintained that. Uh, and while he did not have a service-related disability, which this guide focuses on, there are sometimes other things, other grants from the VA and other things that can help we modified the bathroom for my dad and got a grant for that. So, uh, you know, I, I know we always like to say, remember that if, if none of these grants work for you, there are other resources, right? Absolutely. There are all kinds of resources. The, the VA, as we'll hear later again from uh, Jay Latonia and from others, uh, there are a tremendous number of grants and other resources that are available to assist people. And uh, I, th I think someone asked, uh, do you have to be service connected? No, you don't have to for some of the assistive technology uh, components of this. For most of it, yes, you do have to be service connected, but uh, in other words, for the big SAH grant and so forth, but uh, even for some of the uh, other issues, you you don't even have to be service connected for all of it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so before we move on to get into some more of the nitty gritty, what advice and tips do you have? Like I said, you've been steeped in this for a long time. What, what advice do you have for people who are interested in some home modifications um, and, and need help getting through this? So I am a broken record when it comes to really understanding self. Caregiver, caregivers and clinicians are only as good as the veteran themselves saying, I can't do these things. And the caregivers 
are critical to going with people to appointments. I don't think any of us, when we have complex needs, should ever go to a doctor's appointment alone. And, and we do our homework ahead of time, so make your list. If you really are, are looking at an issue about mobility, go look at uh, AARP's Home Fit Guide. It will prompt you to think about things that you don't even realize you're not capable or able to do as well anymore. So, so really keep that list going and then, then go very prepared for that. And, and don't be embarrassed. Don't be, don't feel any shame in all that and, and be your best advocate. And be persistent, right? We all know that Absolutely. you have you have to stick with it and it's worth it in the end. But I think everybody who has experience with things like this with the VA know that, but uh, you know, anybody who's new to this, just don't give up, you know, keep at it. Um, I think, you know, you, you, sometimes there's legwork you can do before you start the application process, like getting estimates. If there's something, you know, needs to be done in your home. Is that a good idea for people to go ahead and get some estimates before they apply? That's certainly not a bad idea. Yes, you're absolutely right, Amy. Uh, as much information as you can uh, obtain prior to going in and, and making the ap application, that is important. Uh, but I would say additionally that people need to look at all of the opportunities that they have and uh, not only to get the information, but to bring it together and don't uh, don't hesitate talking to a, a certified veteran service officer. Those people are available through the uh, the various VSOs. AARP doesn't do that. That's one of the distinctives. Uh, but the American Legion or Vietnam veterans or there are countless organizations, and many of them have certified veteran service officers who are trained and who cost nothing. If they are charging you for something, they should not be doing that. So go to a certified veteran service officer and let them represent you and tell you what you need to do to get uh, a disability rating and then get qualified for these various programs. Is it is it helpful to talk with the VSOs about the actual applications for these programs? Absolutely. They uh, they should know as much uh, or more than uh, any uh, of, of us do uh, about what the application requirements are. Uh, maybe not more apply. than Jay, and I'll yeah. pitch him. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to get yes. some more information from a VA representative here shortly. Uh, but I think, you know, if you can visit the guide, if, if somebody can throw in the chat once more the, the link for the guide, there, all this kind of information is there. Um, so the grants that I mentioned previously, as well as information about the amount uh, that you might be eligible to receive, you know, they, they all have different limits. So take a look at those. I see some questions about that. And um, if you just can uh, go to the link and, and look at the guide, some of that information is there. Uh, we had one question where they were asking our veterans, spouses, survivors, uh, eligible for any of these grants? Uh, unfortunately, the VA is limited by the statute or the legislation that is passed by the Congress. And in 99, well, I don't know, 95 percent of the cases, the, the uh, surviving spouse is not eligible for those same things. In a few circumstances, they are. Uh, again, I would refer people to the VA for the definitive answer, but primarily health care and other benefits are provided to the veteran, not unfortunately to the families. In a few cases, as you uh, know, Amy, as a caregiver, the, uh, the VA is uh, warming up to the fact that uh, caregivers need to be uh, provided some resources as well, but uh, that's not always true. Right, right, yeah. Uh, well, we're out of time for our part of the chat here. I've just put in the chat again, the li direct link to the guide. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone has that and you'll have access to all of this afterwards as well. And Maria, I'm gonna turn things back to you and uh, and we'll keep going. 
I, I no, appreciate it. Thank you. Fun. Thank you all so much. I don't know if you've had a chance to just look over at the chat because the questions are just like flying through. There's so much going on, but I know that they've dropped the link to the guide. A lot of your questions will be answered over there. Um, I just have a quick one. I don't know if to ask it here or in the next one, but I'll ask it quickly because someone said, can you be reimbursed for home modifications that you've already done? Now that is a good question. I don't know the answer to that. That one, uh, Jay does. However, I keep referring to Jay, but he is the he is our resident expert. So all right, so let's get Jay on. Yeah. If we can get Jay on really quickly, I see him. Hey, can you oh, hear there me? You are. Can let's get there. He is all right. Down. Awesome. Thank Man. you so much. So I'm going to say a little bit about Jason J. Lotonia. Hello. Thank you for joining us. He is the assistant director of specially adapted housing, Native American Direct Loan and Veterans Benefits Administration. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. It's an honor to be here and um, uh, truly enjoyed working with AARP and Blue Star families. So happy to talk a little bit about our grants and answer as many questions as I possibly can while we're here together. Right, it's a collaborative effort. I do appreciate that. So I think my first question was just that, uh, cause I got it from the chat, which was, is there a possibility of reimbursement for modifications that have already been done? Oh, the good news is yes. So w one of the things to know is of course, when it comes to the various grants um, that we'll talk about in a few minutes that VA offers, each one has a different requirement for eligibility. Mm -hmm. So just like if a veteran is applying for a compensation through VA, VA is going to um, probably do some appointments and, and do an assessment of what their service-connected and non-service-connected disabilities are, and they're going to apply a rating. Those ratings that are assigned by VBA go from 10% to 100%, and each one has a code that they're uh, designated, they're given as well, that are assigned. So based upon what those codes are and the level of disability determines which um, benefit programs and grant programs you may be eligible for. Okay. So for a veteran who is entitled to a specially adapted housing grant, um, as David Catherine was saying, it goes up to $117,000. If that person has gone come out of pocket previously to deliver adaptations and put in, let's say, hypothetically, a roll-in shower in a fully accessible bathroom, if that's determined to be a need by VA for that veteran based upon their disabilities, they can use specially adapted grant funds to pay themselves back in um, by paying down their mortgage principal balance. So we apply funds to the mortgage principal balance in those scenarios. Oh, but each, okay. each one's unique. So it's important that we look at each case individually. Right. And they had mentioned that earlier. Each case is a different case. Yep. It's unique. All right. There's so, never one size I'll, fits all with these. Right, right. exactly. I'm actually going to get to the first question that I do have here, and it is for you, mm -hmm. Jay. It okay. says, what does the VA see as the most valuable piece of information in this guide? That's a great question. I mean, where do you start? Um, so uh, I've had an opportunity to look at it and contribute information for the guide. Um, it's just a, it's a wealth of great information. Uh couple of things I like on page eight um, provides VA contact information. That's where it starts. Uh, the ability for a veteran to be able to engage VA, set up an appointment, um, talk with a VA physician and VA staff about what their needs are. That's where we start to document those needs and where VA staff can start putting two and two together to determine maybe what services the veteran requires and what we can offer. Um, the, I like the application checklist on page nine. It's very helpful. I love checklists. As someone who does home assessments and a former home builder, I'm all about the checklists and the schedules. Um, I would say um, 11 through 16, they provide a lot of sample cases. I love mm -hmm. seeing examples to see what might work for me, might not work for somebody else. So having a printed case uh, sample like that is very helpful. And then, of course, um, we also talk a lot about other resources. So just because VA offers these, there have been so many great comments in the chat um, so far about what okay. happens if I don't have a service-connected disability? What do I do? Am I left out in the cold? Well, our approach is not to say no. Our approach to say is 
here are some other resources which may help you. So that whole section from 19 through 22 and beyond that talk about other resources are very important. And, you know, I think people really need to look at those nonprofits and other external resources available in addition to the VA resources as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And if we could get it, I know we've dropped in the link to the guide multiple times. If we could drop it in again, guys, while you're even on this webinar, go check out the, the guide. You will be able to see it right there firsthand. Um, so for both of you, Amy and Jason, many veterans may think this guide isn't for them. We often think about grand improvements like wheelchair ramps or accessible showers. Are there elements of this guide that can help with simpler day-to-day -day improvements or smaller scale projects? Can you share a few examples, kind of elaborate a little bit on that for us? Sure, Amy, you wanna go first? Yeah, I just was gonna say, you know, yes, because sometimes uh, what you need is just a higher toilet seat or you need uh, grab bars in the bathroom or handrails on the in the hallway. Um, better lighting is one of the best fall prevention tips, tools that you can have. So maybe maybe it's for something like that. Um, and then the technology, as we mentioned before, uh, so they don't all have to be that. It may you um, want to uh, uh, create an exercise space because for therapy and there's something that needs to be done to help with uh, with that. Uh, like we, I did a whole bathroom renovation for my dad, but you don't, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be that big. Okay. Jay? Maria, if I could just say, one of the really cool things that I found out after we began chatting with Jay a year ago or so was to find out that he has agents. How many agents do you have, Jay? 150, something like that, that are assigned to work? 168 now. And they really work the process. So it's not up to the individual once they have uh, received, once they've been approved for the grant. Tell us about that, Jay. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank you, David. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, the um, We do have 168 specially adapted housing agents. And whenever a veteran is determined to be eligible for one of our grants, we assign an agent to that family. And they work with them throughout the entire grant process, making sure they're answering any questions they have, helping them make sure they're getting the right adaptations and they're connected to the right resources. So it's a very uh, personalized service because, again, each veteran's scenario is different. So even if the veterans, two veterans, let's say, both lost limbs um, due to disease or an IED or are suffering blindness, and it's the same exact condition, they live in a different home. They live in a different neighborhood. The climate is different. Uh, their support network is going to be different. So we have to have somebody assigned individually to help a system uh, to point to the right resources and make sure they're getting what they need. All right. Thank you so much, all of you. I appreciate that. And this, this question is for all, and it may be a little bit lengthy, but um, so this is a lot of information. And it can be overwhelming when you start looking at everything, especially when your family is already tackling health issues, you're already going through life transitions. What is the most useful advice that you have for a veteran seeking to make a modification to their home? And we'll just kind of go around. Amy, I'll start with you. I think uh, to work with your healthcare professionals first to figure out what's best. As Jay mentioned, your your VA healthcare professionals or your physical therapist, your occupational therapist, especially because they can go through the home with you and say, "Oh, you know, did you realize that this might help you do that better, or be safer, or save your energy so that you're able to do other things?" And I think working because you know we all kind of have ideas and we watch videos and we see things, but sometimes uh, a more objective person coming in can really come up with things that we didn't even realize existed, especially in terms of technology, because there's new things coming out every day. I get these things in my email every day. So work with those professionals, um, you know, to really get a clear idea of everything that would work for you. That would work for you. Okay. Uh, Catherine and David. So my advice would be, don't be ashamed that you need help that you didn't need a year ago or two years ago or 10 years ago. 
um, and, and look to your team, your caregivers, your family, your health care team, and say these words, I need help. Things are changing and seek that help because you have earned that, that opportunity. And unfortunately, as we age, no matter how good we are at taking care of ourselves, things do break down and need help. Yep. I would just add a, another point to that. Today's VA is not the VA of the past. Uh, I, I had the privilege of being able to uh, manage a, a commission on the future of the Department of Veterans Affairs 20 years ago, almost now. And uh, we saw that uh, the VA even then was a much different VA than it had been back in the in the 20th century. Uh, <laughs> hard to say it that way, but uh, uh, and 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 we have learned so much. And again, I, I, I keep referring to Jay. He is such a wealth of information, and his office has uh, provided so much good stuff for us in AERP and, and the 6 million uh, veterans and military family members. So uh, don't assume that the VA today is going to be the same as it was in the past. And you, Jay? And yeah, you, like I have add? to. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I have to echo both of those. I mean, the I think historically, a lot of people have looked at their relationship with the VA as adversarial. I'm going to throw something up there and they're going to deny it. The, the VA secretary has been very clear um, about what, what our expectations are for engaging veterans. Customer experience is the biggest buzz, buzzword at VA these days. We we want to speak to you about your specific case because you have unique needs. So engage the local VA at the VA medical center or the clinic. Let them know, make an appointment. Let them know what your issues are and what your concerns are. Um, so we can start to help you. And there are also, and don't get discouraged. Please don't get discouraged. These things take time. You know, it's a government program, so it doesn't move at the speed of light. It turns more like an aircraft carrier, right? Take some time, but it's it's worth it. And the end goal here is to um, make sure VA knows who you are and what your needs are, that your needs are documented in the medical records um, so we can start opening up services. So many people don't know the services that are out there. Um, the VA medical centers have durable medical equipment they can, can they can assign, and that goes something from a shower seat all the way up to a stair lift that you can have issued from VA. And then, of course, we have adaptation programs so we can increase the size of your electrical service panel or your plumbing systems. We can rehabilitate homes and add ramps and bathrooms. There are so many things out there. I would just encourage you not to be discouraged. And when you have questions, the first place to go, a great place to go first is va.gov, va.gov. And in the top right-hand corner of the screen is a search bar. Put anything in there and you want, HISA, S-A-H, anything, housing adaptations or any caregivers, and it will bring you to the references. va.gov is going to be the one-stop shopping for all your questions about VA benefits and services. Thank you, Jay. Um, and I have a question for you because, as you said, you were in uh, uh, home building and contracting just as I, and we've seen a big change as of late uh, with inflation, with the cost of labor and materials. So does the VA consider that rising inflation and building costs when determining the grand totals next year and going forward? Because it's just not the same as it used to be. It's not. And, um, you know, uh, we do. And luckily, um, Congress agreed to give us the authority to increase the grant amounts based upon the cost of construction. Certain programs maintain the cap. So for instance, VA's prosthetic service has a cap of $6,800 on their long, on their higher grant. They're working to increase that right now, but that's the current cap. For specially adapted housing, each year, Based upon the health of the construction industry, um, we use what's called a cost of construction index so we can increase the grant. So for, for instance, this last year, to, uh, FY24, the grant increased over 6% from the prior year to $117,000. This coming year, we're looking at a 4% increase. So the grant will go over $120,000 once approved by Congress. But we do try to keep tempo with what's going on with the construction industry, thanks to Congress giving us the authority to do so. 
Okay. I'm going to try and go back and forth and answer questions in between or, or pose them to you. Jay, another one, does the grant help with a generator if the veteran is on oxygen? Yes. Yes, it does. So depending on what the veterans, uh, what grant the veteran is eligible for, of course, it'll be different. But hypothetically, let's say a veteran who is eligible for a specially adapted housing grant. If a veteran has, let's say they're, uh, they are a wheelchair user, we have what's called our minimum property requirements. So we want to deliver a home that's wheelchair accessible. If that veteran also needs um, for power issues, a, a whole home generator, we will install a whole home generator for that. Um, the HISA program, it's a case-by-case -case basis on whether they can uh, install generators, but it's based upon the veteran's specific needs. But I would recommend you apply for the grants and have that conversation with your representative to see if that fits your specific need. Okay, and I know we're, we're getting close to the end of our time, but I have one question for the group, one last question, and it's, so I read it, and there, I had a lot of questions because immediately I felt like if I don't have this specific injury, then I don't qualify. What do you say to someone who's reading the guide and assumes, oh, I'm just not eligible because it says I there has to be a loss of limb or there has to be a very specific thing? What advice would you give them and what opportun other opportunities could they qualify for? Um, around I'll, I'll tackle. Yeah, I'll tackle this one uh, first. And then um, basically my my recommendation is apply for the grants, meet with your VA physician, make sure that your needs and your condition is documented in your medical record, and then apply for the grants. That's the only way you're going to know. They're going to assess your specific needs and determine what you're eligible for or not eligible for. Once that's done, if you have a need that's not going to be met by one of the VA programs, we have a list of other resources, many of which are included in the home modification guide here, but other ones that we have. You know, we've got a roll of decks across the country. There are many organizations that provide veteran services for no cost, many mm -hmm. nonprofits out there. So just because you can't get what you need out of the VA, you've got Homes for Our Troops and Gary Sinise and Purple Heart Homes and Rebuilding Together and all these fantastic organizations across the country who we can either help connect you to or you can contact via their website to find the services you need. But I will tell you this, there is someone out there that can consist that can assist you. I appreciate that. Amy or third Amy. One thing I'd like to add to that is we were limited by space in putting every resource that we could. And we stayed away from the, the local resources, but many of us live in communities where there is a heart for assisting veterans. And so looking around in your own community and looking at the state offices of Veterans Affairs, it, in, it, in our state, there is a veteran service officer in every county. So those people can also help steer you to other resources. Okay. Amy, before you go, I just do want to say this because I saw it in the chat that said that all of these resources are going to be made available after the event. So if you don't see it in the chat right now, I know that our folks behind the scene who are amazing, big shout out to them, by the way, they are constantly posting information and they will be posting it as well in the um, email that goes out after. So Amy, if you could uh, answer the question also. Could you repeat the question? I was so caught up in listening and looking at the, the chat questions. Now I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> um, and, and what would you say to someone if they feel like they don't qualify? They look at the requirements and they're like, oh, I don't qualify for that. I'm just not even going to bother because my need is something different than what they're seeing in the requirements. Right. Right. You know, the thing is, and Mike, and I, as I mentioned, my dad did not have a service related disability. I talk with a lot of caregivers who are helping veterans from pre 9 11 era and going on and maybe haven't been enrolled in VA healthcare. I, I, I just think what Jay said is the key thing is don't assume you're not eligible. Don't ever assume you're not eligible. Ask, keep at it. You know, one of, one of the things that I found was. I wasn't just told, oh, you can get this for your dad. You can get this for dad. It just didn't work that way. I kept having to ask questions and I'd hear from someone else and go back and ask for that. So, you know, I've, I've been seeing some in the chat that, you know, say I've applied for things for five years. I don't get any of it. 
uh, all, every one of these grants has different eligibility. Uh, the other uh, options that you can get, you know, I posted in there that, you know, I got ramps uh, without any grant. They were just VA healthcare, our physical therapist, uh, you know, took a lot of doing, but we got, you know, three threshold ramps for my dad um, and a rolling shower, shower chair and various other things. So, you know, talk to your healthcare professional in the VA healthcare and, um, and just, you know, don't give up. Uh, you know, it sounds like these agents that Jay mentioned are a good way to try and talk to a human being and tell them about your own unique situation. I think that's the hard thing. We see everybody's telling, you're all telling us our, your specific situation and we can't possibly answer them all. Um, so I think that's probably the best thing to do, right, Jay? Definitely. We have multiple contacts. The best contact to get in touch with someone specifically about SAH is to call the phone number that's in the book. There's a phone number and an email. The email will take a little, you won't have as quick a response time because there's only a team of three or four people who you would monitor that box, but it's four emergencies. The big, the best way to do it is to contact the loan guarantee service SAH phone number that is in there or to uh, refer to the website. And also you can always call the VA's, uh, the VA's 1877 number, the general number as well, for more information as well, regional number uh, information on in all chat. housing grants. Yeah, they just dropped it in the chat, that information. Yeah. So guys, screenshot it, copy paste, yeah. make sure that you have that information. Thank you guys. I mean, I know, we, I feel like we just, we just, tackled the surface. We're just scratching over the top. There's so much more information and hard to get it all in in the time. But before we go, can we get Juanita back into the group? She's been gone. Come on in. She Hi, is. Everyone. It's so hard to follow individuals like these on the panel, Maria. They are a wealth of information. They really do. Are, they're devoted to helping our veterans, which is why makes me so proud to be part of part of this event today. And I know that everyone wants to know about the Home Modification Benefits Guide. Here it is. There was a question uh, if there's hard copy, and I see one right in your hand. There, there hard is copy. hard copy. We like to put digital out there because it makes it readily accessible to you. You don't have to go looking for anyone. You don't have to be emailing anyone to get it. We understand uh, some people, as my, my son would say, like to break a spine. So want to open it up and see what's inside. Nice. And it is short and sweet. And it is full of information that will help a lot and will answer a lot of the questions here, which I'm very grateful for. And if you go to the aarp.org slash vets home benefits, which we have put in the chat, yep, you can yep. download it. I know that you can also email, um, you know, I know my partner in crime, Cassie Foss, put her email in there. I will put my email in there too. You can email us and we will try to connect you um, with the guide, connect you with us so you can get a copy of this. I will tell you though, it is, it is really hot and um, it's a hot object. It's, you know, really hot, hot commodity. But I'm just so grateful that we were able to put this together. There is a huge, huge need for this. And again, these are benefits that our veterans have earned. And if you, um, you can also go to aarp.org slash veterans. We have information there on the guide, the download. We have information on fraud prevention. We have information on caregiving. Everything that you want to know, anything that will help you, our veteran, live your best life. Jay, I think you have a question, sir. Sorry, I'm muted. Yeah, so the um, basically more of a statement, and it's just that the, um, benefits are a journey. So this is a journey. It, it's not as much as people want you to believe today, there are no uh, easy answers for tough questions. So documenting your medical history meeting with your physician, making sure what you think are your disabilities are reflected in your medical record is the key to open up the doors for all these benefits. Submitting an application and closing your eyes and hoping it's going to get there is, is not the best way to do this. So it takes some time and commitment, but I promise you, if you put in the time and commitment, we will match and exceed your level of commitment. We will come to you and meet you and help and do everything we can to get you the benefits you need. But you are your best advocate when it comes to these benefits.
Yes. And I saw you lean in, Catherine. Did you want to say something no. before we go? No, I, I just, uh, I can't say stress enough. Be your own best advocate and don't give up on this because it really is. And, and connect a thread from what you're experiencing and where it came from. Remember something that happened to you in the service 30 years ago may still be tied to what's happening to you now. So bring that to the front with you when you bring those medical records. Yeah. I, I can say that. that as a, I, I can say that as a retired Naval person who for many, many years didn't think that I needed any help. And, and in the last year, I, in many ways, thanks to you, Jay, uh, and the PACT Act and the, and the changes that have happened uh, in the VA, I have now uh, received a 10% service connected uh, rating. And, uh, and so I have new eligibility. There you go. There you go. Don't get frustrated and don't give up. Amy, any last thoughts? Just, you know, all of you who are uh, watching, who are our caregivers for veteran, I just want to really give a special call out to you. You're kind of the hidden heroes who are, are helping our, our, those who have served our country. And you are very important to us. And I know that this information, a lot of you are the ones who are going to be, be involved as well in, in this. So please um, uh, know that we have lots of information for you as caregivers also on the website, but I also moderate a Facebook group for family caregivers, ARP family caregivers discussion group on Facebook. And you can always post questions there. And if I don't know the answer, I'm going to do my best to contact one of these folks and get you the answers that you need. Awesome. And they just dropped the link to that Facebook group in the chat. So thank you very much for that. Guys, I cannot thank you enough for the wealth of information, the knowledge that's in this group right here. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Thank you to everyone who's been on today. I know, like I said, we just scratched the surface. There's so much more, but thank you for taking the time to ask the questions, be a part of the discussion and help give those answers. I really do appreciate you. I'm just going to round of applause you all. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. So yeah. I'm going to quickly, before we end, um, you know, we always have to go with, uh, at the end of this, there are giveaways. If you all didn't know, for everyone who attended today, there are prizes from Home Depot gift cards, Target gift cards, organizational uh, consultation, virtual or in-person, and doorbell cameras. And the winners will be announced post-event email. So there will be a post-event email that goes out that will also have the recording. I know a lot of you asked in the chat uh, if this was going to be recorded and you can watch it later to gather that information, it will be. So thank you all again so much for being here. We really do appreciate it. And uh, I'm ready. I can't wait to do this again because I just, I want to help people as much as we can. So I appreciate it. Thank you all again for joining us today.